Well, hey, good morning, Ted. Good morning, Nathan. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. It looks like you're kind of having the, a nice morning there on your front porch. I hear birds in the background. Dude, it, it's great. And it, it's I'm out here for a couple of reasons. One, because it's nice to be out here. And two, nobody comes out here. So, uh, yeah, no one's willing to uh, bear the pollen except for me. It's like, okay. No, I'm teasing. It's, yeah, it's, good. it's a good uh, work spot. For sure. Good work spot. Good. So ha how many people are you sharing a space with right now? Oh, so uh, counting me, there's six. Whoa. Six of us. So a 20-year-old, a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 10-year-old, Nancy, and uh, me. So. Any dogs? Oh, yeah. Tater. <laughs> Tater. <laughs> Tater. Tater, the wonder dog. He's by far the most liked person in the house. <laughs> Is he loving having all the humans around? Oh, he's so stinking sweet. He's just, he's just, yeah, he's great. So what's been the, two questions here, what's been the best and the most uh, challenging aspects of quarantine life for you guys at the Low House? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, um, I kind of, and of course, all, all this is just so tragic and it's so tough to deal with. But I think the, the good part of this is forced family time or, you know, we live in an area where there's so many fun things to do and to go and just to, you know, and kids, all these activities. I mean, we've been running hard for 20 years with kids to just go, hey, we're home and we don't have to, wow. to worry and uh, about who's got to be where. You know, we've said this a lot. We got nothing but time. You know, nobody's rushing. I feel like the first time we're not rushing. So I kind of like that piece. That's uh, cool. The toughest spot, um, and I heard somewhere recently, said don't treat people like interruptions or people are not interruptions. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm trying to provide by the, for the family by working on this front porch, don't come out. You know, uh, I've got to work to help families. That's my job. You, you know, so I think there's been that, that part of going, all right, we need to work, uh, but still not, you know. And so it's just hard. I mean, for yeah. kids now and especially Nikki, our, our youngest, to go, oh, I'm home, but I'm not kind of thing. So that, that part's been tough trying to balance that. Yeah, I, I get that. It's like, okay, I have a whole new respect for people who do the home office and stay-at-home moms and school teachers. Like, oh. <laughs> it's just my eyes are being open to, uh, man, like there's some, there's some challenges that I do not feel equipped to, to face. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it nothing else makes you so grateful like especially yeah. for teachers or so many people so many people right like yeah. but for teachers going god love them god love them they're they're special yep um, yep so you said earlier your 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 job is to help families so just to make sure that the the mountain lake church family knows you they've probably seen you teach a couple of times over the past few years at our church and we've done the, the married life uh conference comedy date nights with you but just so you guys know, Ted works for an organization called Orange, the Rethink Group, and Ted and his wife Nancy go all over the country doing uh, marriage conferences and events, and and uh, you kind of find we a way did. to do what? We, we did go all over the country. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess yeah. it's will slow down a little bit right now. <laughs> just a little, just a little. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you, you guys see a, get a pretty interesting cross-section of marriages in all kinds of different contexts uh, around the country. So thank you for taking a little bit of time to pour into the, you know, marital relational health of our church family. And I guess Mountain Lake is y'all's home church now over the last few years. Oh, absolutely. We, the whole family has just loved Mountain Lake and the whole um, experience there. And, you know, back in the day where you were uh, my oldest youth pastor, uh, but yeah, it's just been such the perfect fit for our, for our family and just just loving people and seeing the same people each week. It's, yeah. It's well, dude, that's awesome. You know, uh, for those of you who don't know, Chapman, his his oldest son, is actually part-time staff and, and runs our fourth and fifth grade area. So he's a, he's a stud back there. We, we, we're proud of Chapman, that's for sure. Yeah, he's, he's, so, hey, we were talking this morning about, hey, like, where, where, where could we – where can we kind of springboard off of to just address kind of the relational needs of 
where we're at right now as, <laughs> as married people, as parents, as, as people that are sharing the same space. And like you said earlier, there's these intrinsic struggles of it's weird that your office is also your kid's play place right now. It's yeah. there's, there's probably all kinds of like awesome things with that and some pain points and, and tensions with that. And uh, I think it'd be cool for us to have a little, dialogue bible study interview <laughs> kind of come out all three yeah. of those into just a few minutes to maybe have some helpful conversation for people to navigate this and do it relationally well you know what i mean so yeah. the scripture that that i feel like when we were discussing this morning I, it was pretty brilliant i'm going to read it from matthew 25 and then uh let's just maybe kind of pick it apart and uh, apply yeah. it to our our quarantine <laughs> situation um right in, uh, in Matthew 25, uh, there's this kind of, Jesus is kind of telling a story about what it'll be like um, when we're basically giving an account for the way we cared for people with our time on earth. And, uh, and he, he basically says, uh, for I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty, you gave me drink, I was a stranger and you welcomed me, I was naked and you clothed me, I was sick and you visited me, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drinks? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer to them, truly I say to you, as you did it uh, to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Mm. And uh, it's kind of an interesting awareness to have of every act of kindness is not just some you know charitable thing toward strangers or people who are facing some sort of disadvantage it's something that is really all about jesus so mm. you know I, I guess how would we how would we apply something like that where we can't really get out and go help the homeless right now we can't really go do prison ministry right now we're definitely not allowed to go visit people in the hospital right now so how do we apply that scripture that kind of charitable love uh, to the people <laughs> that we are cohabitating with 24 freaking seven right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I, you know, I think we do think about outreach and, you know, as you do into the least of these, um, you know, I keep coming back. I think the two passages keep intertwining with me as I'm kind of processing how we can help couples and how we can help families, you know, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And I think wow. the things that, both those passages the same is that our response to our family can't be out of their response to us. It's got to be out of our response for Jesus, because if we respond, especially right now, uh, if we try to match emotion for emotion, if we match, uh, you know, patience for patience and um, kindness with kindness with our family, I mean, never before is that tug of war going to be ineffective. Um, it just never wins. You know, when couples start talking about 50, 50 and balance and I get all that. I mean, you know, there needs to be, you know, some give and take, but, uh, if we change our mindset to go, my response to my family is not going to be uh, their response to me or their reaction to me, wow. but I'm a response for him. And let me just tell you, I can say those words easily. <laughs> I can say that out, out loud, but you and I both know, wow, that's, that's a tall order and it's yeah it's completely countercultural. uh and i think what happens with the problem with home for a lot of people is when they get home uh they let their guards down and that's that's good in bad ways we want to relax or whatever but people are very when they're at work and with strangers they're very much controlled they think through their the way they treat each other they're kind uh if they're at work they're trying to um you know present their ideas in a very fair way and in a way that makes people want to work with them. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we get home and they say the number one time couples fight is when they reconnect at the end of the day. Wow. And I think the reason they're doing that is because they let their guard down. They come in, Oh, my day was terrible. Oh, you think your day was terrible. You should have had my day. Uh, and it's what's happening is everybody's at home. Um, and I think we've got this opportunity to, you know, really heighten the tough parts of our relationship right now. Yeah. You know, this is bringing so many things to the top, this, this pressure, or we can use this time to really uh, connect 
and really um, see each other and listen to each other and look at each other's face. And uh, we can make this a really, really good time. And um, there was actually a study that was done right after Hurricane Hugo um, in one of the hardest hit areas. Uh, and they studied relationships afterwards. And what they found was there were more divorces but on the other hand, there were more weddings and there were more babies. And their thought was that during times that are really, really tough, um, that there's this level of emotion that's going, that's either going to do this or, or do that. That's going to push us apart. And the great news about all this emotion is it's making all of our habits really malleable for the first time. That's what the research does on habits. Like, you know, most of the things we do are just habit, habit, habit. Very structured. Very structured. We just do so many things out of habit. You know, get up, brush our teeth, go to work. We don't even think about so many things. And right now, here we are in all this motions. Well, this uh, the cement relationally has gotten wet again. Yeah. All this emotion is like, okay, what do, what do we do with this? what do we do with this? Um, and how do you know we treat our our family like the least of these right now? The, we're probably not the best versions of ourselves. We're probably right. the least of these. So or at least we, we're the realest. We're the, we're the realest <laughs> versions of ourselves right now. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. Uh, no, but I I do think Nathan. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going too long here, but I think we've got this opportunity that we what we I think we've got our the hard realization, but can also be a great one is this time is going to matter. Yeah. Uh, and we keep telling it keep, keep, keeps getting extended. Oh, a few more weeks, a few more weeks. Uh, yeah. and this time is going to matter to relate. Uh, and we can't just be in survival mode. We can't, can you imagine five, you know, let's say five weeks of our spouse or our kids getting the worst of us. Wow. And no one's going to blame us. No right. one. We're right. all collectively, you know, going, this is a crazy, unprecedented time, which I think is the word of the day because it's so true. I felt like we're in some kind of weird movie. Yeah. Um, yes. It makes, I've got no brain pathway for this. I'm like, <laughs> Nancy and I look at each other a lot going, this is so crazy. But I think we've got this, we can't afford to give our families the worst of us right now. Wow. We, we just, we don't have that much capital in the bank because we'll cash it out. That's true, man. You know? That's so true. I hope, I hope everybody here in our group, like, pauses and rewinds and just listens to that again. Like, that is so good. We, we can't afford to, to give our spouses and our kids the worst of us for an extended period of time. I mean, that, that will put us in some sort of relational deficit that we don't want to be. Man. It's been good. And that's the flip. That's the flip of this, though. I mean, that is the the flip side of this is we can also use this time in a really radical way, relationally. And I think that starts with this posture of us pausing, going, "All right," especially for believers. If you're a believer, just to pause and go to respond at a reverence for Christ, not a, again, not a, what they're doing, but at the reverence for Christ of what he's done for us. Cause you go, wow, what he's done for us. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, you know, we move so fast. You're going, wow, what he has done for us. Um, shouldn't that just fill our relational tank to be able to, to give it back? I mean, it just, it just practice. Like we're going to have lots of opportunities to uh, practice, you know, submitting uh, to each yeah. other. You know, we we are good. we could get really we could really build this muscle, this yeah. relational muscle of going. You know, one example that I have, and it's it, this was back in the day before all this blew up, and it seems like a, a silly example, but this guy was telling me that he. He and his wife were having a hard time and they went to, went to counseling and he told the counselor, he goes, every day when I walk into the house, my wife's bag, her work bag's laying right there at the door and there's a hook right here. And all she has to do is pick it up and it takes her one, two, three seconds. Uh, he goes, it's right there. And he goes, he's thinking the counselor's going to get her, you know, uh, and the counselor looks and goes, what an amazing opportunity for you. 
He goes, what? She goes, every day your wife's giving you an opportunity to communicate unconditional love to her. Right. And, all you, <laughs> and guess what? It's only going to take you one, two, three seconds. Wow. Uh, but it's one of those things where he said, I almost got excited when she would do it. Because I thought, oh, this truly is an opportunity. Uh, so I think you go, okay, what if we did that, Nathan? I mean, I know it's a tall order. I mean, I know people are stressed out, but what if we did that? Yeah. I mean, what if we did, th did those things? Uh, and there's also these habits around the house that drive each other crazy. You know, a lot of times neat people are, are married to messy people. You know, these are these opportunities to, you know, to go, all right, it drives her crazy when this is messy. Um, or it drives him crazy when this is messy. It's just there's opportunities abundant, <laughs> right? I, that is such a great, practical yet incredibly profound opportunity for us to recalibrate the things that are super frustrating. And if mm -hmm. we leverage them, like you know, hanging that hanging that thing up, like it's just like look at those fr moments of frustration really as an invitation to like be a blessing to serve that that uh, person that you love i mean i think what you said frustration's an invitation that's good nathan i like Woo! that <laughs> Our frustrations are invitations wow. well i mean i just like that's we gotta re we gotta have new categories for these things these these pain points or else we're gonna drive each other crazy and what i love about what you've done with this matthew 25 and the other scripture i think it's in ephesians where it says out of reverence for christ you're saying we do these things not necessarily because these people deserve it or they're, you know, or they're being, you know, super warm and fuzzy. Like, you know, my kids yeah. aren't the most obedient right now, <laughs> you know, but you're saying be because of Jesus, that's why you do these things as if you were doing it to and for Jesus. So it's a good way to kind of, I think, recalibrate the why behind why we would be um, treating our people with grace and, and kindness and sacrifice and generosity in this time when we're just super close and up each other's business. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a time to listen to, listen to ourselves too. What's our, what's our self-talk doing? Cause well, I think what our self-talk can do, it can be like, well, that's not fair. That's not fair. She just did that. I didn't do this. I would, I wouldn't do that. You know, uh, and with our, you know, what are we telling ourselves that makes it okay to do these things? Wow. Yeah, dude, we can definitely rationalize some, some snarky, snippy, short fuse behavior right now, right? <laughs> right. Oh, listen, I mean, we can start, you know, cause they're being, I mean, make no mistake about it. They're, they're going to be ridiculous. <laughs> we're going to be ridiculous. Yeah. They're probably uh, thinking we're just as ridiculous as they oh. are. <laughs> We're probably worse. We understand us, right? Like I get me. I fully understand my reasoning. You know. Oh, that's great. But uh yeah, I don't know. I kinda get I kinda get excited about this, you know. Just the thing I love, you know, the thing with God's word is you could pick five passages right now and just say I'm going to pretend like we don't want to pretend like we don't have the rest of the Bible, but even if you just had five passages right now, uh, you know, being quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. Right. How rich that is. I mean, <laughs> how rich is that during all this, you know, submit to one another of reverence Christ. as you do into the least of these, just to be motivated by what he's done to us and just to go, God, God has given us exactly what we need relationally to pull this off. I mean, we've got a Swiss army knife, a, a relational Swiss army knife on how to pull this off right now. You know, this time's really confusing in so many ways. I mean, wow. what in the world is happening? But the clarity of how he tells us to love each other. It's uh, there. It's, and it's always been there, but he's gonna give, we got so many opportunities to practice it. And, um, that's motivating to me, actually. I agree, man. I, I agree. I, I, I think that's a, uh... That idea of taking a few scriptures during this time and saying, how, how well can I walk in this? How well can I live this right now? We, we, we could come out of this totally different, totally better than we walked into it. Absolutely. I mean, That's good, man. That's really know. good.
You know, the one one last question with this uh, Matthew 25 thing, a, a kind of a light bulb moment that hit me. We tend to think of, you know, um, you used the word earlier, outreach, you know, as it relates to Matthew 25, prison ministry, you know, people that are homeless, you know, um, and then you bring up this hurricane study. It's really easy for our brain to shift into this charitable, philanthropic mode when it comes to people who are like displaced or dispossessed or living in, you know, these difficult situations. But, you know, now that's the person living in, 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 in the house with you, the person in the bed next to you. They're the ones who are living in some sort of a crisis. So how would you say we begin to have a, 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 a change in uh, focus and, and seeing the people we're living with as, you know, the victims of this crisis, you know, not, not just the people that are, you know, going through the hurricanes and all the other things where we, where we stereotypically think charitable mm -hmm. and generosity and outreach and all those things. Like how do we view the people in our own home as people in need and people that are struggling? Yeah. You know, as we're kind of processing as a family, like, what do we, what do we do? What are we supposed to be doing? And I catch myself asking myself, like, now, are we doing everything we're being told to do? Like, I don't want to break the rules. I mean, um, and when I think about who I'm listening to the, the most, the ones that I keep being the most compelled to obey are healthcare workers. <laughs> um, yeah. And they're like, Hey, you know, we're putting our lives on the line every day for you. Will you stay home for us? Wow. And when I think about, has there ever, you know, when you think about how rare it is that we are being directed by the globe, the leaders of the globe are saying, stay home. You want to know what to do with me right now? You want to know what to do to help? Stay home. Uh, and I'm thinking in that mandate to go, we don't have to question, like, are we, should we be here? Should we be at home? No, no, there's no question to it. So now it is, we've been mandated to stay home. What are we going to do with this time? Um, and I don't feel, I think we could feel very encouraged by that instead of burdened by that. Wow. Um, Relationally. Wow. You know, we could really get excited about, and the more you and I talk about this, the more I get excited to go, okay. Because people say this a lot, especially in marriage. They'll say, well, she makes me so mad, or he makes me so mad. And I'll be like, and, you know, I can't help but get frustrated. Do you get frustrated loud at work? No. Do you scream at strangers? No. Then why do they? Like, why did they get, and so it's not an issue of control, it's an issue of choice. Wow. And that puts the ball back in our court. And I get excited about that, to go, if you're, a, you know, if you're somebody that comes home and your temper usually gets the best of you of whatever, practice not letting it um, and see what happens. Thanks. What does that, what does that feel like relationally? Like, you know, you know, we tell our kids, man, if you'll just do the right thing, your heart will feel different. You know, if you'll just do like, listen to God, what your heart will feel this. And it's not only going to feel great to the people around you. It's going to feel great to you. I'm going, that's us, bro. That is you know? so good. I give my son to this advice all the time. You can be mad, but you can't be mean. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, I need that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. We tell our kids, it's okay to be upset. It's not okay to be nasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you, Nathan. I mean, it is going back. And that's the great thing with God's word too, right? It's not this big. The way we're called to love each other may not be easy, but it is easy to understand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We know how to do this. Uh, I love you it, brought it back to the power of your choice though. It's it's practice these choices. We're the boss of us. <laughs> we forget. Uh, yeah. We, and the, you know, the Holy Spirit right now, like if we listen, like he'll coach us up, man. That's good. He will, he will coach us up, you know, and I, I just think as people pre prepare from a sports perspective to really perform, you know, right now, like go, wow, what if we use this as like spring training for the rest of the season? Uh, 
on how we on how we love each other. I don't know. I just think we've got some great, great opportunities. And you know, and I know everybody's like, let us know what you're how you're experiencing that. But I really would like to know if like, you know, if people are hanging out on this page a lot as a church, to say, post a moment that you had today where you wanted to get frustrated. You have every right to get frustrated. You tried something different and something different happened. That's good. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to know that. I agree, man. I'll, yeah. I, I let's you guys post that in the comments here on this video, you know, when you had an opportunity to kind of be all up in your emotions and just <clears throat> unleash fury, but you chose to be the boss of your emotions. That's good. I'd love to hear those stories too. Well, Ted, how can, uh, how can people uh, get, get uh, you know, be aware of your resources? I know you have a podcast, a blog. So if people wanted to kind of follow along and get some, some relational ma marriage supplemental material, where, where do they go? Yeah, uh, they can follow me on Facebook. It's, okay. Uh, at Ted Lowe. It's been funny. Uh, you know, we usually help church leaders and we're still doing that. I mean, you're part of that. We're still pouring into church leaders, but uh, I've had more friend requests on my personal account more, more than anything. And uh, they need to check out the, the video of me making my wife dance before I'd let her in the house. Erica did, you, did that to me today. <laughs> Please tell me she got it on video. I think so. I was oh. out trying to turn the sprinkler on, and, and I came back to the front door, and it was locked. And she goes, "You got to dance." Or the phone <laughs> up. So, I, uh, I I decided to try to floss, which I don't know how to do. So hopefully she recorded it. We'll see if it makes it out there to social media. Please. Please post it. Please post. And that's the thing too. It's like there's so there's opportunities for fun here. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but follow us on follow us on Facebook. We don't got anything figured out exactly, but we're <laughs> we're we're strike we're struggling with everybody uh, else. We've we've got some stay at home dates too that people are welcome to have. Uh, yeah, we created them about those three. Three. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, those have been fun because we created them about three years ago, and people are like, "I want to go out." <laughs> we don't even want those. Like, oh, that was a you know that that was a bomb. Uh, now people are like, where are they? <laughs> we need them. Uh, yeah, you know. well, we shared the first one last week, Have Serious Fun. So this week we'll probably, on Friday morning, we'll drop another one. Yeah, very fun. You know, it's just, if nothing else, just hang out for a little bit. Lock yourself in the, your bedroom for a few minutes. Tell the kids, you know. you know, Here's some ice cream. <laughs> Entertain <Yeah>. yourself. <laughs> Cartoon Coma is an amazing thing right now. Just but, you know, here's cartoon coma. That's great. That's I, great. I got neighbor. I got neighbors out. See friendly people walking. Uh, <laughs> squirrel. That's awesome. Well, dude. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for making some time for us. And uh, oh. we'll, we'll 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 comment in the comments. We'll put some links to some of those resources and and uh, get people connected to married people. But Ted, thank you so much, man. Oh, it's been my pleasure. It's good hanging out with you, buddy. Yes, sir.